Well, hello there, and welcome to Best of Both Worlds. I'm Linda V. Taylor, and we're doing this cute little sheep quilt today. So stay tuned. This is a wall hanging made by my friend Vinette, and she actually has a sheep camp. And so I'm just really excited to get this done for her. I'm excited to get started on it, so let's go. This is a delectable mountain border, which I love this border. I've done it many times, and I just think it's so outstanding. In the little triangle here, I'm simply going to do a continuous curve. In this area, I did uh, actually record the pattern that I'm doing. So it is digitized and you can buy that. You can look that up with Delectable Mountain. I did all the ones on this quilt freehand because it was just uh, so much faster not to have to click around everything. So here's how I did it. Just come over here with a, with a feather and about halfway here. And then here, but I put a nice little round pearl up there. And then I'm doing one, two, and then again up in the top here in that corner, a little pearl. And then I come down here and I do the other side exactly the same. I am doing this one handed, but I think it is just as um, effective as two for me. So you can see well. Two, and then again, our nice little round. And remember that that has a flat side, and then I come down here and stop. And then you see I could just sew over here to um, the next area where I need to be. So when I did this, it was just all one um, continuous line. You can see down here in the square, there is a record here. So when I record it, I just push that button on my machine. And this is the one that I recorded. And then I just uh, did a horizontal flip and added it to this side. You can see how they fit in there. And then I've um, gone back and refined the circles a little bit. And so it's going to be a perfect pattern and all digitized. So. For those of you that can't do freehand or don't want to do freehand, then this pattern is perfect for that delectable mountain. I have left this area here. Um, I'm going to put some words in here. I want the design here, and then I'm going to put some more words here. And then I'm going to put some little hearts here, and I'll show you how I did those. But let's get that area, and I just have to go to um, draw boundary and this will tell me where my area is. I can just keep clicking it so I can have as many clicks as I want. We'll come right down here. Now I do want to click along this line, so I'm going to go up that line and back down and then continue on. And then again, I want this line because I definitely want to know right where that middle is and I want those lines to be there. And then I'll come back and let's go look and see what's going on over there. Now let me show you what I have done on the top of this quilt was um, I'm putting words in between the designs and some of the words are just a ba or a ba. This one I'm putting Baba, and then I'm going to put Black Sheep, Have You, and then on this side I already have the Any Wool with a question mark. So kind of personalizing it a little bit, and um, when we hang it up I can show you those words so you can see them a little bit better. Move our pattern and get it placed somewhat. There we go. We'll make this larger, 
Luckily, I have those cross lines. So my objective is I'm looking at the, um, the little loops, like this little loop, this little loop, this one, and this one. Make sure that those lines go right through it. And then I can see that one of the sheep is going to come into the heart there a little bit. And most of them it didn't. I think there were only two that did, but I wanted to show you what I'm going to, to do before I stitch this. I'm going to simply go into draw trim. And then I am going to just go along this very line. I could do this at the project, or I can do it right here because I can see the boundary. So I'm just going to come around it like that and then close it, exit the drawing, so that will not stitch at that point. And so it'll just look like it's behind that. Now on um, the other areas, here and here, I am, I've already put the words Baba, so now I want to put Black Sheep. So I just clicked anywhere there on my screen, and I go over into text and I will there's black sheep I'll put OK and I will combine those patterns because I definitely want them to be together I'll move that over there so I can get it in place um, in just a minute Baba black sheep and then I'll put have you so again I will draw the text I'm going to put have you E W E so it's a U okay combine those patterns so they're all together and then I'm going to bring this over. It needs to be a little smaller, obviously. I want it to just be right along that line because I did not stitch in the ditch along these lines. So I really wanted this to kind of take that place. And if I go into my other handles, I can make this um, not quite so slanted. I like that better. Yeah. And then I'll come over to this one. And they're just about the right size it looks like. I can make them a little bigger and a little straighter, not so slanted. And uh, bring that down a little bit. I like that. It's really fun working with these words and putting them on a quilt. So I'm going to just Make that one. There we go. So that's going to go right over that seam. So I had Baba, and this is Black Sheep, Have You, and then on the other side I have Any Wool. Now, um, also down here, I did a little pattern, and it's in, um, I did it freehand, and then I made a pattern out of it, and it's just this little pattern right here. So I'm going to copy that and move it over to the group that I'm in right now. Paste it. And we will just go in and put that in right there. And again, I'm putting those hearts along that line. Awesome. So that's what I have left to do with the... Um, computerized machine. So let's go ahead and um, set the order on that because I really would like it to stitch here. So we will go ahead and set the order on that and I will have it stitch here, then here, then here, and then last there. Set the order again and we'll go and sew it. Here's 
to have you And now it's going to do the little hearts. You could do these all freehand, um, but I want them to all be the same size because I could have done them all freehand, but by doing them and recording them, then I get them all exactly the same. Awesome. I found on most of these sheep that if I start right here where the head is, then I can go around the sheep, and then once I come back around here, then I can go around like that. I'm going to use my applique helper, and I'm putting this um, hole, I'm putting it right over there like that, and this way my left hand can stay nice and flat, and I can just stay really close around to the edge of that sheep. When I get down to the feet, I go across, then I come back down around the little legs and then go across again. Whatever you decide to do, just be consistent with every one and then it's just easier. You don't have to decide, am I going to go around the leg first, am I going to go around the body? Whatever you are going to do. And I will go around here. And I'm just connecting those lines at the same time that I, um, there we go. I'm connecting the lines on the heart. So it's right next to the sheep. And around here, like that. And then I can stop right there. So that is really nailed down. Now while I'm here, um, I'm actually going to do a design on here. So let's just go ahead. We're going to do that freehand. There are 16 sheep on this cute little quill. And so I just jotted down eight designs that I'm going to do, although I've already done a few different ones. On this one, I wanted to do, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. It's sort of that peacock uh, meandering. I'll come out over here. And then I can echo my way back. So I want everything going in the same direction, basically. And this is even hard for me to see on this wool. But they're all coming from the head and then they're coming out this way. Now we will definitely see the texture when this is hanging up. But it's hard to see as I'm quilting. So I probably the camera can't see as well either. Let me see if I turn the light out. That's better, yeah. So I'm going to come back over here and do some more over them over here. You can see they're all coming from the head, coming toward the back of the little lamb. One, two, that one only had two, three. There we go. That is a really cute texture for a little lamb. And we can look at this one. This one had a plaid on it. And so I went ahead and did this when I had the black thread on. Um, and I just followed the plaid lines. And I really like that one. In all the design work that I've done, you can see I have the three little hearts here, but you know that that's a half of a feather. And so on the side, I just did um, freehand, just did that half of a feather. And this is all stitched down, actually, with um, stitch in the ditch. But you can see that that little flap sort of has a mind of its own. So I just want to show you, I have, I think from the middle, these si this side of the feathers will go this direction, and on the other side, they'll go the other way. So one, two, three, and then I'll just scoot over here. I can come back and cut my thread later. One, 
two, three, and then these will go the other direction. So they're starting at the bottom this time and coming up one, two, three, and one, two, three. Sometimes if you just think of the half of a heart, it makes your feather really nice. So um, I have those on the sides and on the top and the bottom. On this little sheep, I'm going to do kind of some geometric meandering, and I'm going to put a little pinwheel in every so often. So point, 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 point. Nice little pinwheel. Point, 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 point. Little pinwheel. It's a great combination pattern. So it has everything in it. Come down in this corner. I'll put another little pinwheel in. Awesome. Oh, I love that. I like this little sheep, um, and it also has the plaid, but there's not very many lines. So I think instead I'm going to do a, what I call a feather meandering, which is lots of um, half circles, crescents with some swirls in them. I might even do just a little feather. It's not going to be huge. If I'm going to call it feather meandering, then I have to put a feather in somewhere. So these crescents will just continue around with some little curls, making this very interesting. And I'm going to continue that design all the way around to where I started so um, it doesn't look like there's a break. This little lamb does have the plaid. So I am going to um, continue to follow that plaid. It's nice I know I can go over my line more than once. Come all the way across. Let's do this line. And this line. And I can just follow the sheep around again to get to where I need to be. I'm in constant again. Doesn't give you a lot of time to think. I think I got them all. I love that. The other sheep is way darker on the other side and it goes with a, a different plaid. This little sheep, I'm doing uh, little circles. Circles are pretty cool because you can go around them more than once. Um, when I do circles, I like to make sure that I make different sizes, that I don't have all the same size. I think it would be a good idea if I get around all around the little face here. And then I'll follow this down, come out right here, and continue. I think I'll make my circles a little bit bigger down at the bottom than they were around the face. Gives a little bit more of a dimension, I think, a dimensional look. There we go, everyone loves circles. On this little white lamb, I am going to do 
these swirls. But I make sure that I go in on that swirl so they don't look like curls. If you want curls, you don't have to go in on them. But I want this to be, um, just look more curly. And so if I go in on it, like all the way around and back, all the way around and back. And I'll come around back over and then I can finish over the, like that. Why well, this really, you can see, just takes up the, the sheet. Really brings it to life. Doesn't matter which way you, you um, curl. People always say, do you curl the same way all the time? I have no clue. I don't think so. But you don't have to change every other one or anything like that. Oh, that one is so cute. Okay, on this one, um, I'm, I'm going to do half circles. Okay, so... Um, and, but I want to make them smaller here and then get them larger as I come around here. And I want it to be directional like this. Um, so, sort of like I did the peacock meandering. So I'm coming down like this, come back and kind of jump in the middle of the last one, like this. And I'll jump out a little further this time. So they're just starting to get a little bit bigger. I'm not very good at gradual, I have found. So I just say, OK, three rows of this size, and then I'll get larger. So this is the last row of this size. So now I'm getting larger. And when I get finished, it will look gradual. This is what you could do for fish scales, too. There's lots of things for birds. Lots of things that you could do with this design. And now I'm going to get larger. There we go. And we'll just finish up there on the edge. Very cute. I love it. Okay, this one, I'm going to come into a curl, and then I follow it back like that and come over and make another curl. And so you just make a curl, come around, and follow that curl back. The secret to this is following that curl back around like that and then take off. Follow the head of the curl back around, staying close to it, but you don't have to be perfect. Thank goodness, because we can't be, right? So follow that back around. Follow it back around. And you can change directions or stay the same direction again, no matter what you want to do is just fine. Follow it back around and go over into another curl. I call this one uh, wrought iron. And it's a wonderful meandering, and it really is great for sheep. Look at that. So cute. OK, on this sheep, I'm just going to, um, again, I'm doing the half circles. I'm going to kind of keep them all even. Just going back and jumping in the middle of the last one. This one I can jump around and get this side over here now. I know you can all do that. That is easy. Just go down, jump in the middle of the last one. All about the same size. Wow. 
wonderful. I was looking at the little heart design I did and I think I could do that on one of the sheep, so I'm going to. So I'm gonna come around here like this, making our little half, half of a feather or half of a heart, and then come down like this. Come over here and again, up like this. Last one there. Oh, this is going to be my favorite. So cute. Oh, I want to do these little lambs all day long. So you can imagine that they're feathers or they're hearts, because they're both. There we go. I had three lines that I could do this writing on these seams, so I put ba, ba. Here I put I love you, and I did the heart with the E W E U, and then ba again. And then on the next line down, I put I love you too, and then ba, 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 and then on the last one, Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? You saw me do that one. So this is the cutest quilt. I want this quilt, but it isn't mine. Bennett did a beautiful job. I also want to mention, I think this was a perfect choice for this quilt. And this is the Hobbs wool batting. It's just soft and just has enough of a loft. I love working with this, like quilting on butter. And Vinette just went crazy when she saw this beautiful, it's a red fox plush, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what she has on the back of it. Isn't that amazing? It's awesome, easy to work with. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that was a long segment, and I appreciate you sticking with us. And I hope you have some ideas now that you can use on other quilts. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.